right? You mentioned that you didn't have like a clear strategy. Like what was, what was, if you were to sum it up, like what is the strategy that you think you need or people need coming out of school to land that first job? Uh, sure thing. So it's pretty much what I do in the consultations or anybody that's in school. I sit them down, I ask them what they want to do. And then we kind of work on reverse engineering. So instead of starting the next kind of square one, I get you to look at the end goal first. And then we kind of work backwards. So mm -hmm. I already mentioned, you know, reviewing the skills, but you might not know what skills to look for because you don't know what job you want to do. Mm -hmm. So I refer to people use certain sites like uh, it's someone called cyberseek.org. And it's another one I have in my book. I forget like the actual URL. But what they do is you can type in different things and it uh, give you like a little Venn diagram of different stuff that is connected to. And then you can start researching those roles. And then what I always employ people to do now is once you find a couple of roles you're interested in, we got the best thing smoking that ain't exist 10 years ago. You can go on YouTube and do a day in the life of blank, blank, blank. And most of the time you will find a couple of videos of a content creator showing you what they do on a day to day basis. Which would then you say, hey, I'm interested in. So, like, for example, I have a day in the life of a cybersecurity analyst video on my channel. I get people all the time to come on there and ask me about being in cybersecurity. What do they need? Thank you for putting this video up and show me what I'm doing today. I'm interested in this. That's one of the things you can do. And then after that, now you say, okay, boom. So, how do I become a cybersecurity analyst? So, that's another question you have to mm. answer. Yep. Then you start looking at the typical skills you'll need. And then, now this stuff isn't really do one, two, three, four, it can all be interchangeable. So you have, I always talk about like resume, networking. The biggest one outside of skills is going to be your network. If you don't utilize LinkedIn and surprisingly, Twitter has also become a place that you can get job leads and actually get hired from if you follow the right people. Yeah. If you're not utilizing your social media to be better in your career, then you're doing it all wrong. Mm. You have to build up your network because you're at a disadvantage. For example, if somebody like you is trying to get a, uh, somebody watching with no experience trying to get a job like me, I'm 10 years in the game already. You don't yeah. have that experience. Right. Right. Or let's say, let's go back to five years ago when I had like five years in the game and you don't have an experience for yeah. an entry level role. You need to have people in the network that can vouch for you. And I'm talking about from all facets, like regular team members. Uh, C levels, hiring managers, all those people you can interact with on LinkedIn. You can interact with recruiters, uh, talent acquisition, you name it. And the strategies that I teach for people, like whether it's an internship or a full time job, I teach you, okay, boom. If you find a job that uh, only apply to jobs where most of your skills align to, apply to that. If you're very interested in it, you can be proactive instead of waiting on to get a denial letter. You can reach out to the recruiter on your own through LinkedIn. And don't just say, hey, I apply for this job. You can just send them a, a quick little note. And then once they uh, accept it, then you can go back and reintroduce yourself and tell them about yourself. So almost just like I introduced myself on this stream, you tell them about yourself, what you're working on. And then, okay, hmm, would you be interested in a screening interview or something like that? Like That's normally what they do. And those are actual things that I did that I screenshot from years ago back when I'm um, I was unemployed for like six months in 2018 that I did that led to getting many different interviews, mm. just directly reaching out to hiring managers and, and recruiters. So yeah. that's something that I wasn't taught in school. So I was doing it all wrong. I was, you know, applying to like a hundred jobs and something I forgetting what I applied to. And then also the something I forgot to tell you is like, I, uh, with my book, people get a uh, career roadmap that I created that they can just fill in for themselves in a job checker spreadsheet. The job tracker one is huge because if you notate what you apply to, then it kind of helps you remember what you apply to. And it has a tab for you to assess your skills. And then also a thing that helps you is you can put that job description in a, in a text doc or something like that, save it. So you have it. So whenever they start calling you about the interviews, you can go back and review the stuff and work on what you need to work on and study for. Mm, mm, that's dope. That's dope. You're going to have to do us a favor too, textual chatter. Drop the link to the, uh, the book in the description as well, too. And Ms. Wade, uh, if you're watching, uh, drop the link to um, Textual Chatter's uh, YouTube page as well, too, in, a, in, in in the comment section so that we can actually get um, him some subscribers in as well. Um, I love that. I love that. So let's continue on. Let's continue on. So you hit on the strategies of getting employed uh, into tech. I love that. I think that's fantastic. Talk about your journey after that, right? So you've gotten to tech. You know, what made you decide 
you know, then to uh, continue to develop, because obviously you are a first generation, um, you know, college grad. And, you know, you're, you're, you're obviously I can tell you're a leader uh, by the things that you're doing today and the, the fact that you're giving back and you're giving game and stuff like that. You know, you got your tech job, your first one. And talk about that path, because you you, went, you obviously went back to school. How long did it take you to go back to school? And why did you go back to school to get an MBA in information technology management? Definitely all good questions. Uh, we'll go back to the first job uh, briefly. Um, the reason why I knew I needed to climb, because I, I love to help desk, but I always say it doesn't get the love it deserves because mm. they uh, a lot of people downplay it, but not realizing, you know, we're a very integral part of the whole operation. Routing stuff to the important place is super important, no matter how, you know, middle school you think it may be. But um, it's also a very jo a job that becomes mundane quickly. And I knew I didn't go to school to do that. And, you know, help this or sometimes people that do the most work would get paid the least, you know. So uh, yeah. just to, just be transparent then, that job was paying like 40K. But I was doing more than 40K worth of work. And then you combine that with, uh, and it, I actually, you know, you know, you, I tell everybody, most times your first job ain't going to be the one you stay at a long time um, mm -hmm. and you deal with stuff. And I learned on the job, uh, became, you know, even more of a man on a job dealing with workplace politics, learning how to, uh, you know, maneuver, making my own networks there, you know, actually having management stopping me, preventing me from going to different departments and, and things like that, that I actually experienced that I got, you know, from the horse's mouth, which I knew I was like, hey. Uh, I got to go because an uh, incident happened one time and I thought about going into my manager's office. Like, uh, I know you seen Lean on Me when he got mad about when he picked <laughs> up that thing doing the national anthem. Man, I was hot, man, because, you know, if, you, if you're going to stop me from from moving, at least say, hey, you know what? We really like you as a, you know, as a help. Analyst. We're going to give you a, a salary increase. Something they wasn't doing like that. They was, you know, taking money out of my, you know, out of my mouth. So I was like, OK, I got y'all, man. Um. You know, I could have got to Texas faster had I had a strategy then, but uh, um, I looked up. I interviewed for two roles at this uh, company. Uh, I worked for uh, well, the, the the big company is called Income. They got headquarters in Atlanta, and they would like do payment card software. But in Dallas, the company I was working for, there was uh, they own was called Online Strategies, and uh, I started working for them in a knock, and quickly that was boring too because it only was fun when incidents happened. So when I had to do you know, document everything or, or some going down because some going down is a problem in the knock because they had different clients they helped. And if a uh, connection or server went down, then they lose the money. So if they lose the money, we lose money. And that was the big issue. But I had too much downtime. I used to work. My shift was uh, Thursday to Sunday. So I do 12 hour shifts on Saturday and Sunday. Yep. And I was like, you know what? I didn't <laughs> I'm not finna because they wouldn't let that be remote. So I will wake up on Saturday and Sundays most days to do nothing. I used to walk around. I used to leave work sometimes and just go to the Galleria and, and just walk around to a page of duty went off because I was like, I'm not going to just sit here. <laughs> For real, man. True story. I promise you. I, I, I really so easy jobs. It, it, well, that, that was an easy one for you. Right. Very easy. I mean, I just like tell people, hey, hey, can you come visit me at work? Like, no lie. I was, <laughs> stuff I wasn't supposed to do. Like, I, I really was. I was doing. But uh I started grad school, so let's see if I finished in 2013. So I started grad school probably about three years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It took, it took me almost about three years to get back in. And um, one of my uh, classmates uh, that it's funny, me and him went to uh, Louisiana Tech together, and he had actually already moved to the area. He was working for uh, State Farm at the time in Dallas. And uh, what's so funny actually about that is now he's about to be working the same company I am. But he was uh, he was going to the school. He said, "Yeah, man, I'm gonna go to." Uh, University of Dallas, and I looked at the curriculum, and I looked at the hats, like, hmm. So I applied, and I got in. And I actually tell people all the time, I hate that grad school is more expensive than undergrad, but I feel like you get more of a value from grad school than you do from undergrad. It's true. It because is true. Because the classes that I did directly correlate with stuff that I do now, and it's also how I was able to level up at the company I started uh, with after uh, McAfee mm. Mm. Because, mm. So, because I took the stuff I learned. Yep. Well, I think, I think a huge piece of that too, textual chatter is, you know how like when you're an undergrad, you don't have any job experience, right? So you have little 
to correlate that with in the real world, right? But when you're in grad school, you know, you're working the majority of the time. I'm assuming you were you were part time or were you full time? I just forgot something, man. I, I get so ahead of myself. Yeah. Of why I also wanted to what I what made me stay with computers. When I was doing my CIS tenure, my uh, work study student job was at was like pretty much a student IT uh, assistant. And I worked for uh, Mr. Eddie, who was a black guy who was pretty much designed like all the computer infrastructure in our new college of business. So that was another reason why I was like, OK, I could potentially do this one day because you know, without him, you know, he's running. So I'm talking about from the, the screens that come down, the smart podiums, uh, the networking stuff that come in the drop down, like how mm -hmm. we got the mm -hmm. uh, the networking closets layered, you know, from uh, one, two and three, the third floor. It's like all that different stuff. So he was over there. So I got to shout him out because he's also one of the reasons why uh, I stayed with it. You no, know, that's that's wonderful because that's you know what that basically shows is that you had an influencer as well too, right? You saw somebody who right. was doing something very similar to what you wanted to do, and you said you looked up to him, right? It's almost like that, uh, you know, that role model, right? And and the the right kind of role model as well too. So that's good. But you had to say this. You have to you have to tell me this. So, um, well, I, I want to go back to my my point that I was going to make is, you know, when you were in grad school, were you part time or were you full time? uh full-time you're, you're full-time um uh, full-time working or full-time uh a student full-time uh working and student because you could be full-time with uh six hours in grad school okay okay very good very good so you know one of the things that i say because I, I did the exact same thing as you to uh textual chatter is you know i spent some time out of um out of school and then i went back i went actually went, went back 10 years after i graduated and I thought it was perfect, but I, I I do agree with you that, you know, grad school, even though it's more expensive, it prepared me a lot more than my undergrad did. And I the reason why I say that, though, and this is the reason is because during my undergrad years, I was like you. I wasn't working at Target, but I was working at a hardware store to where there wasn't any correlation with, you know, me doing anything on I.T., to being in the hardware stores, you know, customer service and, you know, selling, you know, nails and hammers and stuff like that. There wasn't anything. So but when I was in grad school, I was a full time uh, 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 worker as a director. Right. Having to uh, support some of the platforms that I'm responsible for. And when you're in there going through your technology classes. That stuff, it, it, it all makes sense then, right? When when you're running, um, when you're working on accounting and managing your accounting, it all makes sense. And you start to say, okay, well, this is how you would start to evaluate a company. This is how, you know, um, uh, uh, you look at revenues and things like that. It all makes sense once you are getting that real world experience and in school. So I tell people a lot of times now too, is this, if you have an opportunity to, um, you know, go back and get an undergrad, just make sure you're working. Just make sure you're working. Like if there's a completely like, I'm, I'm talking to uh, one of my co uh, one of my patrons now, Alicondra, she's, um, she's a full-time student as well as, um, you know, somebody who's in a workforce, right? She's doing cybersecurity. That's going to, her be doing that now, she already has a, 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 a bachelor's and a master's, but her getting an undergrad in it, she was only had to do the technical portions of it. So she's going to learn a lot more going through an undergrad program very similar to how we were when we were going through our MBA program. Who would right. you have to say about that? I totally agree, man. I had, uh, and I saw the difference too when I was in um, grad school, the difference between me and the students that didn't have any practical working knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, we did uh, we did a lot of, you know, our classes had a lot of uh, group work, which like right now I'm working on like a huge project in my new company that they brought me on specifically for that because I had worked with the software for years but you know those uh, group assignments or you working on um we had a some type of project and i cannot think of the uh the, the name for it but you have to like actually like present something and get everybody on board so you take somebody at the head and once you get their co-signed and everybody you'll start following the line we're working on stuff like that or yep. Yep. enterprise architecture or um we did like future training like all different uh, type of type of classes we did you know were useful there it really wasn't a class that i took that, that wasn't useful for me and i still you know have the books in case i have to you know pivot in back into some of that stuff 
Exactly. Exactly. I, I still have, even even though I've been out since uh, I graduated my undergrad in 2015, no, not my undergrad, but my uh, grad studies in 2015, I still have my books, Textual Chatter. My wife be like, man, you're going to throw these things away because they're sitting in the garage, right? She might see into it. <laughs> nah, I'm keeping them. I'm keeping them. I might have to reference them one day. Let's do this. Let's